you have an Adobe Photography subscription, you're going to want to get this latest update. It's a big one. There's lots of new exciting things. In this video, I'm going to go over what's new in Lightroom Classic version 12.0 and show you how to use the new tools. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. Before I get into the new, really exciting stuff, let me just show you a couple of the minor things they've also changed or updated. Now in your Preferences panel, under the Interface tab, you'll see options for swapping left and right panels, either just in the Develop module or the entire program. So if you think you would work better with them switched, check off one or both of those boxes and then to have it apply, just close and relaunch Lightroom. They've also done some speed updates, particularly for Windows users, as well as some changes to the import box. I'll put a link to the Adobe page with a feature summary if you want to read more about all the things that they've added and changed with this version. So let's get to the exciting stuff. The first thing I want to show you is an addition to the spot removal tool. The first thing you'll notice is that this little toolbar right below the histogram has added a new icon. This button here indicates edit. So if you are currently in the clone tool or the masking or any other of the tools on this bar and you want to get back to editing, you can just click that one. I personally don't see a need for that one. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts to open and close things. For example, Q opens a spot removal and closes it again, and R opens and closes the crop tool. If you would like a free Lightroom keyboard shortcuts PDF, I'll put a link in the description area below that will tell you how to get a copy. So let's open the spot removal tool. You'll see that this has changed slightly as well. Now you can still see the clone tool and the healing tool as before, but now we have another one that looks like an eraser and it is the content aware removal tool. So let's see how well it works. I'm going to use it at opacity 100. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm cloning. And I want to get rid of some of these spots. Previously, I did all this with the healing tool inside of Lightroom, but it's a little bit cumbersome because you have to constantly choose the source area. Let's see how the removal content aware works. Just paint over this leaf and voila, it works pretty well. So you can work really quickly just by painting over the spots that you want to remove. And then you see it's kind of thinking and analyzing. Let's do a couple more. And you can even handle complex things like this leaf sticking out here, or even this batch of leaves up here. There are a couple of refinements available for it. If you click this button here to refresh, it will just choose a different source area and you'll see the result change. Watch as I click it again. So just keep clicking this until you're happy. That looks good. Another option you have is selecting a custom source. You can see here it says command plus drag on the photo to do so. So let's try that. So if I want to select a custom source for this one, I just need to hold command and then draw a little square like that. Now it's pulling from the area where I drew the box around in to use that as the content aware fill and that works pretty well. Let's try over here. So see how quickly I can just paint over these things that are obtrusive or distracting and solve them really quickly. Again, if I want to choose a new source, I can just hold down my command and I'm going to choose this area here and that works a little better. Let's try it on one more. I wanted to see if it could remove these signs and things in the background. Let's try that one. Awesome. So really quickly, I can remove some distracting elements of the background. Look at that. Orange sign be gone. Let's give it a real challenge and see if it can remove this big thing. Now we might run into a challenge here, so I'm just going to do the top part first, and then I'm going to do the legs separately. I'm pretty impressed with that. Let's take a look at the whole picture. 
and you saw me do that real time, it took about 30 seconds to clone those things out. So overall, the new content aware removal tool gets two thumbs up. The next thing we need to look at is changes to masking. Now, when you open the masking tool, you'll see some options. You can select subject, which isn't new, and sky, which also isn't new, but you can also select the background. Previously, you had to select a subject and then invert it, so it was a little bit of a workaround. Now, you can do that with one click. In this case, I'm going to remove some of the texture because I want to blur the background out a little bit. And a little bonus trick for you here is you can change the color of the background. So in this case, because it was shot in the studio, I can literally make it any color I want just by using this color picker. So I'm going to give her a blue background, something like that. I've done a few other edits here to darken the background. And now you can see that it's gone from gray wrinkly to blue and much smoother. The second new option for masking is to select people. This is really exciting for me as a portrait photographer because previously, if you wanted to do things like eye or skin retouching, you had to do that with a brush. Now, when you select a person, you can choose the whole person or do individual parts. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see which part of her it's going to mask. As I hover my mouse over, you can see face, skin, body skin, eyebrows, the white part of the eye or the sclera, the iris and the pupil, her lips, teeth, and hair. So if I want to give her a glamour makeover, I'm going to choose skin, eyebrows, eyes, iris, lips, and teeth. If you want each of them as a separate mask because you want to do different edits to each item, make sure to check this box here. Create six different masks. Now the masks are all made for you and you can see here it says face, eyebrows, and so on. I wish it would actually name the mask that so you didn't have to open each one, but you can go in and manually rename them. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these masks because I wanna show you what else comes with this update. Inside your presets, there is now something called adaptive portrait. If you look at each of these, you can see what happens if I hover over. Glamour portrait is giving her smooth skin. Gritty portrait, not so flattering. It has eyes, white and teeth, and so on. So I'm going to select a few of these, Glamour Portrait, Enhance Eyes, Whiten Teeth, Darken Eyebrows, and Texture Hair. Now you can see that it has added a new mask for each one and named them. So if you want each of these individual ones, I recommend using that adaptive preset. Then you can go in and adjust it. For example, I'm not crazy about what it's done with her lips by adding a bunch of pink. I'm going to choose a different color for her lips that is a little bit more burgundy. Likewise, I find her teeth are a little bit too white, so I'll just bring the exposure or the highlights down a little bit. And in the opposite direction, I'm going to brighten her eyes. And now I might decide instead of textured hair, I want smooth hair. No problem, close the mask. And of course, that is all transferable. So now it makes it really easy if you have an entire set of similar portraits, you can just copy and paste or sync your settings across all of them and be done with your portrait editing in a snap. While we're here and on the subject of portrait editing, something that happens a lot when people wear glasses is these reflections. So let's try that new spot removal tool on the reflections and see how well it does. Bingo. This used to be a job for Photoshop, and now I'm finding that Lightroom can handle it. Amazing, right? Three little circles drawn, glasses reflections, gone. Let's take a look at the full before and after. And see how quickly I was able to do that? This is huge. But let's try this new people selection tool on a group portrait and see how it does. But first, I'm going to darken the sky. So I'm going to do select sky. 
and make it a little more blue. I wanted this to be more of a nighttime photo. So I'm really going to darken it down and make it look more like blue hour. Remember to rename your masks as you go because it'll be easier to tell them apart later. Next, I'm going to select the background because I want to darken the whole thing and have them stand out more. Now let's brighten up the people. So I'm going to select create new mask and select people. Now I have the option of doing individual people one at a time, which is also really cool. I'm going to select all and just use face skin because I want to brighten their faces. So I'm going to select that and then just create the mask. Now I can brighten them and soften their skin at the same time, just a little bit. One thing I noticed when I took this portrait is because the light is coming from the left hand side, the people on the right are a little bit too dark. So I'm going to create a new mask, select people, and I'm going to select those three people. Notice that I can add one person and then add another. So I'm just going to check off until I have those three. I'm going to do it as one mask, but you can do it separately if you want to adjust them each in a different amount. Then I'm just going to bring up the exposure and maybe the whites a little bit. See how that made a big difference? So take a look at the masks I've created. These were all automated. You notice I didn't do any brushwork here. I selected the sky and darkened it, darkened the background, brightened and softened their faces, and lightened the three ladies on the left. Previously, this would have involved a lot of brushwork. And you couldn't copy and paste this to another similar image in the same series because their faces and bodies may have moved. Because this is AI and automated, it will copy and paste well. I wanted to show you one more example where I used these new selection masks. I used select subject to lighten the subjects, the people. I used select background to darken everything else and change the color. So I actually cooled off the background by adding blue and gave the subject or the people more yellow. So they stand out more because warm colors project and cool colors recede. I lightened mom's face a little because she was in shadow. I darkened their hair because their highlights were blowing out a little bit and darkened the sky and made it more blue. Let's look at the full before and after image. This was all done using those new masking tools that I just showed you and not a single brushstroke was made. How brilliant is that? I wanted to show you an example of when to use select object. In this image, if I tried select subject, it chose the person, but I really want to select this bouquet of flowers. So I'm going to undo that and choose object instead. And then using the square tool, I'm just going to try and select it. And voila, now I have the flowers selected that I wanted to select. And now I can give them more color or clarity or whatever it is that I want to add to that object. So if you're using the select subject mask and Lightroom gets it wrong, try select object. As long as the object you're trying to select has a well-defined edge, it should do a pretty good job. Often when Adobe comes out with new updates, I wait a little while and I'm a little bit hesitant to update right away in case there's any bugs, but I was eager to get this one because with the last update, when we got the new masking tools, it was a big improvement. So I was kind of hoping this one would be along the same lines and I was not disappointed. So I highly recommend updating your Lightroom right away. This update is a winner, two thumbs up. If you want to learn more about Lightroom, click on this video now. Or if you want step-by-step -step tutorial on getting started with Lightroom and learning all the tools, check out my Lightroom course. Until next time, take care and we'll see you soon.